Hey everybody, James Briarton in Charlotte. What an incredible, and I'm going to say, frankly, unexpected night we are having with the Aurora Borealis being seen here in the Carolinas. As far south, as far as I can tell, as Florida. It's just after midnight. We've rolled into May 11th, 2024, and so many of the photos taken on May 10th here absolutely just blow my mind. I'm so glad so many of you have been sharing them with us here at the Carolina Weather Group on social media, and we're going to show them to you right now. So if you've got some in chat, go ahead and tell us where you are, what you are seeing, what you have seen, and I'm going to share some of my own too. So this is the first time that I've been able to ever see the Northern Lights, especially here in the Carolinas, where we almost never get them if it wasn't for this really rare solar storm we are having right now, what NOAA's Space Weather Center calls a G5 extreme solar event. Andrew, a frequent viewer of the Carolina Weather Group, sent us these pictures from his front porch in Anderson, South Carolina. Take a look at this in the sky here. I see purple, I see green, I see pink, I see red all in a crystal clear night sky. Unbelievable photo. Thank you for sharing this with us, Andrew. This is so cool to be able to see. And like so many of us, I bet you, Andrew, use a little bit of long exposure of photography, which is available on so many of our phones now in order to be able to capture some of these rich colors. Ken Adams is the Carolina Lightning Chaser, or tonight the Carolina Light Chaser. Here are the Northern Lights in Cleveland County, Shelby, North Carolina. You can see, again, a mix of colors. And notice how they kind of streak, too, right? Brad Panovich, Chief Meteorologist at WCNC Charlotte, was explaining these work a little bit like clouds. There's kind of a wave of them. They come and go. They're individual streaks of light that are being essentially energized by the solar storm and it interacts with molecules in the atmosphere and that kind of gives you these waves or this aura if you will in the night sky they come they go they may be back throughout the night so we may get to see even more pictures like these that ken shared with us from shelby scrolling on down here sarah smiles a little Hall and Oates reference. I love it. Taking a look. And again, take a look at this uh, perspective. She's shooting this through the tree line. So not only is this the thing where uh, you're able to see it in part with the naked eye, but you can actually see it engulfing so much of the night sky. You don't necessarily need wide open skies in order to see these. I was absolutely shocked when I was able to see the Northern Lights outside my home in suburban Charlotte near the town of Matthews. I could look up and faintly see it with my own eye and then if i took an exposure photo a long exposure photo with my cell phone i was able to even get a clearer picture which was just unbelievable to me i've never seen anything like this i've never had the opportunity to, to travel to see the northern lights never expected to see him here here's a good example from katie who lives not too far away from me in indian land south carolina and you can see again it's a streak kind of on an angle here great view over the house but notice how well lit the house is sure i'm sure it's long exposure i'm sure that helps light the house up a little bit more but we do have light pollution in these photos a thing that normally makes any sort of night viewing impossible to see of any sort of event in the sky but this event the solar storm is so strong that we're actually able to see it even if you're dealing with some light pollution all right here's some pictures from brad panovich you guys know i love our wcnc charlotte weather cameras that i get to use at my day job and brad was using them tonight to look at the green from the aurora borealis over charlotte motor speedway near concord or up at 1500 feet from the dallas north carolina camera there just outside of Charlotte, where you can again see multiple colors on the night sky. Just look at that. Absolutely unbelievable. And frankly, what a week for these cameras. Those cameras caught that shelf cloud that produced um, what was produced from the severe storms on Wednesday, put down two EF1 tornadoes. But that camera right there at nearly 1,500 feet, just getting hit right straight on uh, by that shelf cloud. You can see that on uh, the WCNC Weather IQ YouTube channel if you haven't seen it already. Uh, crazy crazy video um all right let me see if i can get uh x here to uh reload i don't know what it's doing but um it sent me back to my home screen that's okay because
because Brad just tweeted this out from Noah and it really kind of helps explain what's going on. So here's the Aurora forecast and look how intense that is. 100% probability of seeing the Auroras over portions of northern United States, places like Wisconsin, upstate New York, which, you know, would still be an incredible rare northern light show to be able to see it there. But the fact that it's even spilling down even further south into portions of the southern United States is just absolutely bonkers to me and bonkers in like an excited kid in a candy store kind of way all right i'm going to reload our uh, our twitter page uh, we're at carolina wx group on the platform lovingly still referred to as twitter by so many people uh bev in boiling springs says that they saw them uh we had another uh youtube viewer tell us they saw them in north hill um Tiffany, please, everyone be safe. Yeah, we can have lots of, of, of fun with this. Luckily, it, it's not harmful to humans. It's not like severe weather. But yes, if you're going to be standing outside at night, keep an eye out for cars. Keep an eye out for maybe wildlife, depending on where you live. Uh, that is some really good points. Uh, KM King watching says uh, 35 miles south of Jackson, Mississippi. And they can see those hints of pinks and green probably there with their own naked eye. And again, probably even brighter if you had access to uh, kind of some long exposure photography, which, you know, just a couple of years ago would have been some really like high end professional equipment. And now so many of us can just do that on our cell phone uh, makes it uh, really cool and even easier for all of us to see. OK, I think I got our uh, Twitter page back. So let me let me scroll. I went too far. I went too far. Uh, okay, Christian Espinoza from the Charlotte Motor Speedway taking more pictures here of the Northern Lights seen over the racetrack there. What a very cool sky. And uh, Brad retweeting here from a viewer named Bobby who was landing at Charlotte Douglas International Airport getting a treat in the night sky. What a show to be seen. What a perspective. How cool that would have been to be on a plane seeing that coming on in. Jackson, Chris Jackson uh, retweeting Cameron here in Lexington who used uh, their phone again just using our phones to be able to use such a common tool to get these amazing pictures. How cool is this one from Troutman, North Carolina? Again, I really love the degree of the colors that we are seeing. We're not just getting uh, just one color. We're getting kind of the whole gamut here as uh, so many of you have been able to step outside. Mark Suddeth, friend of the show, Hurricane Track. What a cool guy. And he's uh, sending this here. Oh, wow. This is another aerial photo. Uh, he writes, dude, wow, with lots of exclamation points. This looks almost too high to even be a drone. I wonder if uh, maybe Mark was also up in a plane. That is just unbelievable again that we're able to see something like this so far south mitch west who does a lot of chasing uh for south carolina never in my wildest dreams he said would i think that i would be able to experience something like this in central south carolina currently still at lake murray damned and i'm stunned break <laughs> these a little bit picture here again what a great photo to show you how these can kind of be streaky and again almost cloud like and that also means that they move a little bit like clouds would be blowing in the wind they're blowing in the solar winds if you will and so if you're not seeing them right this moment they might be back as the solar storm is expected to continue all night long and into tomorrow but no telling if tomorrow night is going to be as vibrant as it was tonight uh frank uh, here in South Carolina, he works for the National Weather Service. You can see again inside a neighborhood taking what I think is a long exposure photo um, and the National Weather Service town in Morristown, just across the border into Tennessee, retweeting this picture. Again, you can clearly tell this is long exposure because a couple planes or something shot across the photo. I wonder how long the exposure on this was. Oh, only 10 seconds? Wow, I would have thought it would have been longer than that. But uh, you can see uh the aurora borealis there guys i could do this all night long just keep looking at these photos so please keep them coming share them with us if you want to see them on the stream here tonight ethan clark in north carolina in disbelief that he's able to see the northern lights from his own backyard what a cool and you know exciting people who have lived here for decades uh are wigging out tonight over being able to see this from our own backyards normally you got to travel to uh, remote places or exotic places and get lucky it came to us tonight thanks to this really strong and extreme solar event chris jackson he's got his 5d mark 4 shooting a time lapse 
He says, I don't know what it will look like when it's done, but he'll send it in full. And until then, even just this one frame is beautiful. I'm excited to see that, Chris. Looking forward to you sharing that with us. Um, another one here from Ethan Clark. He's saying, never in a million years did I think I would see them here in North Carolina. Uh, this is my picture from outside my house. I mentioned I'm in the suburbs suburbs of Charlotte near Matthews. That means we've got street lights, we've got porch lights, and you can see it there. It's faint, but you can see it. And I could kind of see it with my own eye too. And then that long exposure here, about five seconds from my Google Pixel, uh, really helped me really fine tune exactly where in the sky I was looking. Plus, if you're standing outside, just look at the sky. Give your eyes time to adjust and try not to look in any lights and you might be able to pick it up a little bit more see it a little bit better i can't believe that andrew price in charleston south carolina got to see it that's even further south than where i am how far south will it go i can't wait to wake up in the morning to find out exactly how far south but i know already that florida is seeing it and that really just is crazy. Uh, Peter, who sends lots of pictures from Western North Carolina based out of Asheville, right now up in Central Virginia along the Blue Ridge Parkway, because of course he is. Every color being seen by the naked eye, an unreal moment that he was able to capture, and I'm sure his account is full of even more great pictures. So again, the National Weather Service, a rare extreme geomagnetic storm has reached Earth this evening, started on Friday, rolling now into Saturday morning. Here are a few key messages from NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. That's right, there is a such a place as the Space Weather Prediction Center on the potential impacts, because there are some potential impacts of an extreme G5 solar storm like the one that started at 6.54 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. It's likely to persist throughout the weekend. Several additional Earth-detected coronal mass ejections are in transit. Because the sun, as you can see in the diagram on the right, kind of sends these off into waves. So it's going to kind of pulse and kind of come and go throughout the weekend on Friday night, obviously peaking real high for us. The impacts include those for communications, HF, VHF, UHF. If you're of a certain age, you'll remember those are wavelengths for radio communications and television communications and GPS, those things could be impacted. Power grid, spacecraft, satellite navigation, and other technologies could also be impacted. I haven't seen too much of it tonight. I also haven't been trying to drive with my GPS. So if you're out driving this weekend and your GPS is having a hard time figuring out exactly what road you're on, you can blame it on the sun. Um, context, the last time we had an extreme G5 event occurred with the Halloween storms of October 2003. 2003, the event resulted in power outages in Sweden and damaged transformers in South Africa. Again, the cause of this, the source, mostly a large complex sunspot cluster, NOAA region 3664, for those of you taking notes, that is 17 times the diameter of Earth. It looks small on that picture of the sun, but if the solar eclipse taught us anything, it's that the sun is huge, right? So additional activity from this region is to be expected throughout the weekend but i would wait if you haven't gone outside yet i know it's 12 40 in the morning step outside it could be very well worth it um all right let's see if you guys have sent us any more pictures uh in the time we've been streaming here tonight and if you send more in the morning i can't wait to see them especially those of you who have been taking long exposure pictures. Anthony just sent these from Edgefield County, North Augusta, South Carolina. I know where that is. Uh, thanks for sending those, Anthony. Thanks for streaming with us late tonight here on the Carolina Weather Group, because yes, this is in fact weather. And I love the fact that we're able to get on with you guys tonight to share these pictures. This is so cool. Uh, Anthony, thanks for sharing these uh, with uh, with us. And I see that your user handle there is Daddy Shark. Uh, maybe you have some kids. I know I took mine out from bed. They were asleep in bed and I was like, you gotta come outside. <laughs> Once in every 20 years this is happening, you're, you're coming outside. Uh, Chris Miller here. Uh, he writes, this evening was something I never thought I'd get to see in South Carolina. I am now a Northern Lights junkie. I think so many of us are. Take a look at the colors here. Take a look at um, those lines, right? That's so cool. And then the fourth picture had like a, um, wow. Actually, wait, let's, let's stop and look at this third picture. Look at that. You can almost get the impression looking at this picture of those solar flares coming straight on at us in this picture, Chris. That's so cool. And this fourth one, I like the composition, not only of the stars in the sky, but that water tower in there too. Again, gives us a real sense of like 
earthbound looking up at the sky. Uh, guys, I really love that you've been able to share those pictures with us. So please keep them coming. We are at Carolina WX Group on X. Twitter. We're also on Facebook. We're on Instagram. In the morning, I will be looking at more of these pictures so we can share even more of them. And man, I got to really just say, I'm so glad that the front came through earlier today. Yeah, we maybe had another round of thunderstorms that, you know, after Wednesday gave us a little PTSD. But I'm so glad that that front came through because so many of us here in the Carolinas have crystal clear skies to be able to see this. Could you imagine how frustrated we all would have been if we had had cloudy skies during this rare event? And my sympathy to all of you watching from other parts of the country right now who maybe have clouds because I know I've texted some friends and family elsewhere in the country and they are under clouds. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. If you're new to the Carolina Weather Group, we are a weekly podcast based out here in the Carolinas, but we are for science, weather, and technology to entertain all of you across the region and across the globe. So I hope you will like, subscribe, smash that bell all those stupid things uh, so that you can join us next week when we drop our new episode every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. And then obviously, as you can see, we do other fun streams as conditions warrant. And yes, that includes space weather. For now, I'm James Briarton in Charlotte. Get outside. Enjoy it. It's really cool. And I know you know that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here tonight. And I appreciate you being up late with us. Talk soon. Bye-bye.